Hello there, and welcome to today's Mystery Theater. Today we'll be working on the solving of diamond problems. The mystery of the diamond problem, where you're given the product and the sum, but you are not given the factors or the add-ends. In the previous videos, we've learned simpler versions of these problems, which just tell you, remember our template is, if you're given two numbers and you multiply them, the product is on the top, and we're putting the sum on the bottom. Now this is very simple in some cases, like if you're given something like this, given the x and the y, very easy to come up with x times y equals 12, and x plus y equals 7. Very simple to fill that one in. And we also worked on other ones. I'm just going to use these same numbers to illustrate the point. When you're given the x and the y, if you divide by the x, that equals the y. So in this case, 12 divided by 3 equals 4. And then we can simply do that and get the bottom. And another two-step one is if you're given, for example, the sum and either the x or the y, then we know that x plus y equals 7. So if we have a subtraction going on there, we get the other one, and then we can refer back to this. But what happens on these types of problems where you're given the product and the sum but don't know what the x and the y are? Okay, here's the top secret part. You can either guess and check, which for simple problems might get the job done, but for more complex problems it might take you all day and you might still never get the answers. That's not okay. So, today we reveal the secret of the quadratic formula to solve diamond problems. Oh, when this is all over, you'll think, wow, that's a long way to go for this one, Mr. Witcher. But you know what? Sometimes you just have to go a long way to get stuff done. Now, for the purpose of showing this example, we're going to do an easy problem that we already know the answer to. And we are definitely not going to go through the whole lesson, the proof of what the quadratic formula is and where it comes from. You can research that on your own, but it is what it is. Here's the quadratic formula. This is a way of solving quadratic equations for unknowns in various situations. Now, let's say, for example, we have... Uh, this diamond problem presented to us. Now, of course, you know. Do you know this? Do you know this? The answers are x equals 8, y equals 3, right? You know that. But that's top secret. It's important when we're learning something new to take an example of something very simple that we already know the answer to because that'll prove how the new complicated thing works, and then you can use that thing to do more complicated problems. So this is just simply a matter of substitution. We start off with this. We are given x times y equals 24. We are also given x plus y equals 11. So let's say if we isolate y here, by subtracting x from both sides of this equation, we can set y equal to 11 minus x. Now, we can substitute in the multiplication like this. x times y, which is 11 minus x, equals 24. So far, so good. Are you with me? We're just substituting. And we already know the answers, but of course we're pretending that we don't. So I can show you how the quadratic formula works. 
we multiply using the distributive property, 11 times x, two x's, but with a negative sign, x squared equals 24. Finally, I'm going to subtract 24 from both sides. Why? Because I can. You can do anything you want to to an equation as long as you do it to both sides. There's a reason in this case, though, which is I want to set the whole darn thing equal to 0, 24 minus 24 is 0, and I want to put them in order of power, which means I'm going to start with the largest exponent and work my way down through the exponents until I get to the integer. There's the negative x squared. There's the 11x. There we go. That's a plus 11x, isn't it? Okay, so we're in order of power. Ta-da! And now we're going to apply the quadratic formula. And here's why. Go back to our quadratic formula up here. Notice it's filled with B's, A's, and C's. We now have values for A, which is right here, negative 1. We have a B value, which is 11. And we have a C value, negative 24. Now that we have those values, whoopsie, there you go. See the A, B, and C? Now that we have those values, I'm going to start a fresh page. We're going to substitute into the quadratic formula and solve this problem. Ah, oh, lots of paper, lots of paper. High tech. Here we go. So we have our equation. We know what A, B, and C are. And here we go with the quadratic formula. X equals minus B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Substitute negative 11 plus or minus, there's that 11 again, minus 4 times negative 1 times negative 24, all over 2 times a, which is negative 1. Being very careful with our substitutions here. Next. Next, we uh, get rid of some parentheses. We do some of the operations inside of our square root sign. We square 11, get 121. We multiply all three of these numbers together, which gives us a negative 96. Do that on your calculator. All over 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. Okay. I'm going to change colors real quick. I hope you're following me so far. Just a formality now. Negative 11 plus or minus the square root of 25 all over negative 2. What that means is negative 11 plus 5, right? The square root of 25 equals 5. over negative 2, or it equals negative 11 minus 5 over negative 2. Negative 6 over negative 2 equals 3, or negative 16 over negative 2, which equals 8. So the plus or minus means we have two options here, right? We have a positive square root of 25 or a negative square root of 25, which is what gives us our two possible answers here. And if we go back and check in with what we knew the original answer was, we knew that was right. Okay? So hopefully, all you need is a diamond problem with a product and a sum and a missing x and y. There's the quadratic formula. You can solve any diamond problem now without guessing.
and class dismissed.